I've recently come into the possession of a number of these faulty Philips uh, Hue LED strips. Uh, they're called the Philips Hue Light Strip Plus. That's the model of these ones. Um, they all have a similar fault where when you um, apply power, all the lights, all the LEDs, the individual diodes light up. But um, as soon as you turn it off using the app, uh, some of the LEDs stay on. Uh, so even if you dim it, uh, those LEDs are always still at full brightness. So it can be any of the LEDs, uh, one of the red, green or blue ones, one of the warm whites or one of the cold whites. It's usually all the LEDs in the uh, entire strip stay on, so all the type, all the ones of that type will stay on. That's the, the fault that we're going to be repairing today. So I'll demonstrate the problem. I'll plug in the controller box here and the all the LEDs will light. I'm just going to dim the image, make it a bit darker so you can see the individual LEDs themselves. There we go. I'll try and get it so it's not flickery. So. If I turn off the light strip now using the app, you can see the uh, some of the LEDs turn off, but there is some that remain on. So these three are all the cold white LEDs. Uh, and if I turn them back on again, you see the warm white ones and the RGB one in the center turning on. Um, so even if I dim the control here, you can see that's almost all the way off dim. The other two are quite dim, but that one the cold white one is still very bright. So the issue here is that the power is always being applied to that cold white um, channel on the whole LED strip. So I'll show you how to repair this issue. I'll just brighten up the image again. So let me unplug these. Uh, so the issue is caused by, um, usually by a, like a short, um, if you cut one of these strips, maybe with metal scissors while the strip's on, you can cause an internal short uh, where the uh, some of the the power is is shorted back uh, into the wrong channel, um, causing too much amperage to flow through the, the little transistor that uh, controls the turning on and off of the LEDs. So if that happens, the uh, the transistor, uh, the MOSFET, um, will go uh, dead short circuit. Um, so whereas normally it gets controlled on or off with the the app in this case. Um, it would always be stuck on. So that's the problem that we're seeing. Um, so I can show you what to, to do to fix this problem. I'll just put the phone out of the way. You will need a couple of um, bits of equipment to fix this issue. Uh, first of all is you'll need some spare uh, MOSFETs. So these are the components themselves. Let me see if I can brighten up this image a bit so you can see a bit better. There, that looks good. Yeah, so these are the um, spare MOSFETs. They're currently in a little um, pick-and-place packaging, this little uh, tape here. Um, so these are Nexperia um, PMV20ENR transistor MOSFETs. So these are N-channel MOSFETs, which means that they are normally off. Um, so that's a, a handy way to let us test which is the faulty transistor on here. Even though it's quite obvious with the color coding, it's still good to double check the issue. So these are all inside this little box here, and um, basically what we need to do is remove the faulty one and replace it with a known good one. It's one of the new ones here. Um, the easiest way, or the pretty much the only way to unsolder these parts, because they're so small, um, you can see there's 50 on this strip, so they are absolutely tiny, um, you'll need a, a few bits of equipment. Firstly, you'll need some tweezers, of course, so you can grip the little parts. Um, but secondly, and less commonly, you'll need a hot air reflow gun. So this is um, one especially for soldering. Um, this is the kind you will need um, with interchangeable tips. Um, not strictly necessary, but very useful. Uh, so I've put on the smallest tip that I've got here just so I can focus the heat. Um, so this is kind of like a soldering iron, except it uses hot air instead of direct heat contact to melt solder. So I will show you uh, how to take this apart here. Just a case of spudging open the control box. I know there are a few models of this control box. Um, this one has a plug on this side and the uh, wire to the LED is fixed. It's not removable. Um, so I will actually um, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. So here's our control box and we just need to remove the board out of this little packaging. So 
just a case of using the spudger to open up the little tab, and then you can pull the circuit board out of the case. So, on the board here you can see the transistors themselves. These are these black packages along the bottom edge next to the coloured wires. So the um, the one that we're interested in here is the top one, and that's connected to the white wire. So that's the cold white LED. You can see the bottom one here is connected to this brown wire, and that's the warm white LED. Uh, the red, green, and blue are all for the red, green, and blue LEDs, and those are the middle three in the centre there. So we need to uh, test that this is the only problem, um, and the way we can do that is using a multimeter. Um, any multimeter with a diode test function will do. So I'll bring this in here so you can see it. So if I connect these two leads together, it makes a beep and there's a reading uh, on the display. But I'll just use this to confirm the problem. So I'm going to connect here, which is the, um, the source pin of the transistor. There's three little pins of you. Maybe if I zoom in it might be a bit easier. Yeah. So there's three little pins here you can see at the top. That one there, that's the source. Um, that's where the voltage goes in. And this one here, this is the um, the output one. Uh, I can't remember what that's called. Uh, the drain, that's right. So the drain here, um, source and drain is where the voltage goes. It goes from the source to the drain when it's turned on. So the voltage passes through here and it turns on the um, LEDs in the strip. Um, this bottom one is the gate. This is the little signal wire, basically. So when um, the signal is given, it turns on the transistor and the voltage can go across, which turns on the LEDs. Um, but now, in this case, for this kind of N-channel transistor uh, MOSFET, um, it will normally be closed, so I wouldn't be able to get any conduction between this source pin and this gate, uh, so in this um, output pin, the drain. So let me just put my test of points here. So you can see that's beeping, you can hear that's beeping, so that means that there is currently a connection between these two pins. Um, there shouldn't be. Um, like I said, this is a, an N-channel MOSFET, so it means that they are normally not connected unless um, they are powered on, given a signal through the, uh, the gate. I'll test this one, this is the blue one. Um, this one is working, so I'll test these two points again. Um, no, that one's fine. So there's no conductor, no conduction between those two points. Test the green one as well. It can be a little tricky to uh, get your test points onto here, but no, that one's fine. You can use these large solder points as well on the left hand side. Um, they're a bit easier to to probe. No, that one's fine. In the warm white. That one's fine as well. So the only one we've got a problem with is this cold white up here. So that's making a connection where it shouldn't be. So we need to remove these uh, this component here, and uh, we'll do that using the hot air gun. So let's get my uh, multimeter out of the way. And I'll bring in my little helping hand here. So I'm just going to connect this up so it's a bit easier to hold the board while I apply the heat to it and remove it with the tweezers. So I'll zoom out a little bit again. Just lock the focus there. So <clears throat> if I grab my hot air gun and I'm using uh, 350 degrees Celsius um, at about three and just over three and a half um, on the uh, the fan speed, which goes all the way up to eight, so it's just a little under halfway for the, the fan speed. I'm just going to apply heat to that component up there. And uh, after a moment, the solder will melt and I'll be able to pick it off with these tweezers. So you don't want to keep the heat on too long, um, but if other component solder does melt, it's not a problem. Just as long as you don't pick it off, um, it will stay connected. So I'll try and keep the heat away from the wire there, which is melting and burning a little bit. So there we go. I've removed that component now. And 
what we're left with is three little um, solder points underneath. So that's where the component connects to. Um, but we need to clean those up just so we can solder the new component onto them uh, a little bit easier. So I'm just going to use a regular soldering iron for that. I've got a very fine tip on here and I'm just going to use some normal leaded solder um, to reflow some uh, fresh solder onto these pads. So, so I'm just going to heat up the pad a little bit and give it a bit of a rub till I feel that solder underneath there melting and get replaced with the new fresh solder. You can see the little shiny ball of solder that it's replacing the old one with. It's sort of just um, revitalizing the solder ready for a new component to go on top. Just clean my tip off a little bit there. So, that's looking good. And uh, to help the process, you can add a little bit of flux. So I've got a flux pen here. Normally the solder itself has flux in it, but I used to like to just apply a little bit to help the process along. And that just makes the solder run a bit easier, uh, more fluidly uh, when you come to heat it up next time. So uh, now we've got the pad ready for our new component. Um, we just have to get it out of this little packaging here. So you can see there's tape on top and that kind of holds the components inside. Very simple to remove. Just pull it down and uh, it'll expose the one that you need to take out. Um, I usually just tip it onto the board or whatever uh, just so I can pick it up a bit easier. It's hard to pick it out of the little component tape. Oops. So um, I usually just try and orientate it easiest to start with, put it the right way around, and to place this I usually use my right hand because I'm right handed, um, just because it's quite a fine task when you're placing it on the right place. Um, the solder's not ready to go yet, it hasn't been heated up, so I'm just going to bring in my hot air gun back again. I'm going to hold it in my left hand this time, so I apologise if I get it in the camera a bit strangely. So I'm just going to hold it and remelt those little solder balls. You can see them melting when they go a little bit shinier than they used to be. And then you just place the new component on the top. And you can see it actually, it wasn't fully melted there yet, but as soon as I heated it a little bit more, it melted and the component dropped into place. Oops, just nudge it back into place there. Thankfully the um, solder sort of um, has a bit of surface tension, so it pulls the component into the right place where it should be. Uh, so I've just moved the heat away again and that cools the solder and that forms the connection again. So that one's fully connected, ready to go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take it off of this here so I don't accidentally cause any problems when I'm powering it up, any shorts or anything. You can see I burned the wire a little bit there. Too much heat in the wrong place. That's okay, not a problem. No exposed wires. So I'm just going to put this down here, refocus, and I'll bring in a bit of the tape so you can see what's going on. So here's the end of the tape. Remember the cold white LED used to um, be constantly powered. So I'm just going to apply power into the board here, and that's lit all of the LEDs, which is a good sign. Um, but the issue is if I turn it off using the app, um, Oh, I'll bring the phone in so you can see that as well. Uh, if I turn it off here... Oh yes, you can see all the LEDs have gone off. So that's an excellent result. That means our soldering and replacement part worked perfectly. Um, so you can test it just by dimming as well. Make sure that all the LEDs dim. Um, and you can test setting the color as well, just so you can see if there's any other problems that you might have caused during the replacement. There's the red, there's the blue, there's the green. Nope, that's all working perfectly. Just the warm white and just the cold white. Yep, no problems there at all. So that's a fully working LED strip again. Um, so I'll just put this back in the case. Easily done. It's got a little bit of a complex wiring uh, 
safety um, strain relief on the back end. So there's three little pins just to locate the circuit board with onto the case. But then you just got to wrap this one around that center harness and then back out the back. And that's it fully in place. I'll just give it a push down on the edges of the board to make sure that it's properly secured, which it is. And then pop the cover back on. And that's one completely fixed LED strip. So uh, I'll put a link in the description to the um, replacement transistors MOSFETs that you'll need. Um, they're very small, as you've seen, they're um, SOT30, uh, SOT23 packages, um, which can be a little bit tricky to solder, as you've seen, but it's definitely possible um, with some simple tools. Uh, that hot air gun cost about £20, and the um, transistors themselves uh, cost about £10 for 50 so they're about um, quite cheap, not very expensive at all. Um, but yeah, so this is a fully repaired strip, and um, I'll try and show another repair video of a different kind of fault um, once I come across the actual solution for it, but uh, until then, thanks for watching.